Okay, I've left my bowl alone for a while, so I'm going to check on it now and see how it's doing. Um, it's been about three hours and it's had some time to firm up. The foot feels a lot firmer and the sides are not quite as floppy. But I can see that a few problems have developed while I let it wait for me, while I let it rest. Um, I see that this side is kind of collapsing in. It's formed kind of a rim. That's because the side was maybe too high here and also the clay was kind of soft. And also I've lost my round shape. Um, I can also now really take a good look at how this rim isn't as pretty and round and even as this rim. So this is where I'm heading and I'm gonna take a little time to do some refining. Now with the refining, I. I will use my hands mostly, but I'm also going to start out by using my needle tool. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to bend this back a little bit, and I'm just going to peel a little clay away. Notice how slowly I'm going. I really don't want to like hack into this because if I do that, I'm going to I, I run the risk of ruining my edge, and then you know it starts this cycle of let me trim a little bit here and let me trim a little bit there and it never goes well. So I'm just going to take a little bit off and then I'm going to start using my thumbs and I'm going sideways because I want to move the clay around. I want this to look smooth on the inside. I don't want it to look lumpy. And it may take me a while to get there. So again, this is kind of a put on your favorite music um, or listen to a book on tape or you could probably even watch videos at the same time as long as you're glancing at what your hands are doing although I don't recommend it I feel like the best thing that you can do is just be present in your work concentrate on your work and make the best th thing that you can although I do like to listen to music while I work so if you'll notice I'm just taking my time rotating and moving the lumps and bumps around, heading towards a nice smooth interior now. And I have been thinking about what my design will look like on the outside. I've got it all planned and I'm almost ready to, to work on that. Once this is looking good, I've got a nice rim, I've got a nice interior, then I'll be ready to add on clay if I want to and take away clay if I want to. Although my sides are pretty thin, I haven't left myself too much clay for carving, but I could still do some incising, no trouble. So maybe you can tell if you like scroll back to the beginning of the video and, and look at it now, you may be able to tell that it is improved and that it's looking it's looking better. So take your time on this step. It may, it may take a while. You may need to even put it away again for a little while and come back to it. You want this rim to be even. So if you see any lumps, start sliding them. An even rim is where we're heading or what we're shooting for anyway. looking pretty good. You can still see how flexible it is. I mean, it's kind of all over the place, but I'm trying to keep it trying to keep it in that nice round symmetrical shape. I do have kind of an uneven rim here, which is annoying. But I'm going to ignore that for the moment. I'll deal with it later. I'm going to put this back upside down again and take a look at my foot ring. There's no cracking. It looks pretty good. I could, at this point, choose to smooth this line out if I wanted to, so I could take the clay and I could join it like this all the way around, and then it would be like a continuous line, and I'm just going to go ahead and keep doing that since I started it. It'll be a continuous line from the side of the bowl all the way down. You don't have to do this though. If you like the look of the donut ring, you can keep that. My clay is still soft enough that I can smooth the foot ring in on the outside. Remember, I did this already on the inside, so I know that the foot ring's not gonna pop off anyway. But 
there I've got that on there now so now I mean I kind of like the way those marks look that's a nice texture so I could even leave that texture on there it's kind of kind of rustic looking and kind of fun I like that I think I'm gonna leave it it wasn't necessarily part of my design but sometimes when you're making things you start to change your design based on how things are turning out and that's okay I think every artist does that now I'm just taking a second to smooth inside. When I tell you that we're working with three-dimensional objects, it means that every angle of your object counts inside, outside, bottom, top, back, front. Everything matters on a three-dimensional object. Unlike a painting where when you, uh, whatever happens on the back of the painting, nobody sees. And if you want to cover up the edges with, with a mat board or something or the frame, nobody sees that either. Um, you have to pay attention to all sides on this kind of a project. I could spend a little more time, I think, just smoothing some of this exterior lumpiness if my goal is a really smooth surface to start with. And I usually like to start with kind of a clean slate, that's how I, how I like to call it. And, you know, if I wanted to make this into a really large teacup, I could roll another coil and add a handle here. Um, it's kind of like a C shape. This this is um, a cup that had a handle added to it, so you can see the handle there. It's basically just a coil that I scored and slipped onto the side. These little dots were also scored and slipped on. And then I did some carving here. And there's my foot ring. Now what I can do is I can um, start to decorate it however I want. And uh, I'm going to stop my video now because I feel like this part is up to you.